Welcome to Lorena's Little Corner. Now, if you started off in life where your dad was a bank robber and your stepdad was a murderer, you would clearly become a Christian comedian! Yay! Welcome, Mr. Gary Falls. Thank you. And addicted to chips. And addicted to chips. Of course. But Not American well, chips, like, what do they call them? Fries? Yes. Yes, addicted to fries. We'll play by Gary later. <laughs> Seriously though, I'm not making that up. It's, it's all about what it is, is my real dad was mm -hmm. involved in a murder and my stepdad was a clear criminal. Right, right. So that was my bad. Okay, okay. <laughs> but how do, you, well, how do you get away from that then or what happened? So when you were growing up, mm -hmm. was it a little bit cool? Uh, I never knew. It was so ah. weird. But when I brought up, my real dad who had done the bank robbery mm -hmm. with the gentleman got shot, um, I never knew about that until I was 16. Okay. So it was kind of kept hush. I knew I had a dad. My mum told me he worked in the rigs. <laughs> so I never, I never asked right. any questions. And my stepdad was uh, self-educated, well-spoken. So he wasn't like your typical Glaswegian gangster. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. he wouldn't run about with guns and knives. Okay. Like in his home, it was secure. He had a business. I just thought he was a businessman. And then what had happened was, I was in the army, I joined the army, because I know I had a big family obviously. Right, right. I joined the army to do my own thing, be my own kind of man. And uh, I was about 16 I think, I was in basic training. And when I, 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 my dad had a pub, and I'd bring the lads up to the pub. So they knew my dad's face, they'd seen him, they, they knew what he looked like. Mm -hmm. And we were in the, the naffy in the army one day, and my mate said... What's, what's the naffy? Naffy's a shop. Ah. Uh, so I'm, I'm using army yeah, terms. No, like, <laughs> Jumping to <laughs> And we were in the shop and my mate said, is that your dad? And I was like, oh, what are you talking about? And, and I looked at the paper and it was my stepdad's face wow. on the front paper and it was like, call me off games, has been firebombed because obviously he ran a notorious security company. Okay. And I was like, I can't be my stepdad. My stepdad's mm. a businessman, he owns mm -hmm. pubs and taxis. And when I grew up, I realised that's the most dodgy thing you can get in Glasgow. Oh <laughs> Car washes. <laughs> right. You know? uh -huh. Ice cream vans. We all wear balaclavas. <laughs> <in the table. laughs> no, again, no, I just put it with a carry on. <laughs> and, and what happened was, I said to my mum, Oh, what's this? And she brought me up and she explained everything. Okay. Who my real dad was, who his name was, what happened, why I'd never seen him. And I just thought, that's unbelievable. When I was. How did that make you feel, though, that you hadn't known in the you know, first 16, 17 years of your life anything? Mm -hmm. I, I still think I'm in shock. Like, because I've never seen him. I've, I've never seen him since I've been two, mm -hmm. so it's, it, it feels like an emptiness. Right. And I think that's why church works so well for me because mm -hmm. Jesus fills that emptiness in our yeah. lives, doesn't he? And I, and, I, and I think, but there's still a remnant of that that life that I want to meet him. Yeah. I want to say, oh, you're my dad, I'm Gary, and mm -hmm. just have that mm -hmm. chat. I've tried to catch him, can't get But what happened was they'd done a robbery, and my dad was given a shotgun. And uh, it was one of, it was a, a cash and carry, I think it was. And the guy had come out, and in the shotgun was a bullet, the thought was a blank. Okay. So in Glasgow they call that a frightener. So they bang it, the guy gets yeah. a fright, you take the money off him. But what happened was, is he pointed the gun at the guy and, and pressed it, and it, it killed the guy. Oh. Um, so he didn't know it was a real bullet? didn't know it was a real bullet. So what happened was, it just got bigger and bigger, and it's, it, I mean I looked up the papers, I couldn't believe it. Because mm. like, it's, it's, it's yeah. not amazing, I don't mean it's, I don't condone anything, I don't think anybody should be hurt, but it's amazing to think I was a kid and never knew this was going on. Yeah. yeah, this, was yeah. All, this was all my life. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm kind of glad I didn't know what was going on because I never had that baggage of yeah. knowing that growing up. Yeah. And I think if I'd known what my dad was growing up, things might have been different. Mm. Um, and does that give you, I mean, I, I'm sitting here thinking total respect to your mum mm. who's sheltered you from mm. what could have been, like you say, something very different because Unfortunately, and I mean, I know you're still a young man, mm -hmm. but even just thinking, say, 20 years ago, um, it, it's, it was even a different climate then. So mm -hmm. there was something glamorous the about the Glasgow gangster, yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, does that give you like an absolute respect for your mum who shielded you from it all? Yeah, even my stepdad. Mm -hmm. I've got massive respect for him because he kept me out of that life. I was never involved within the, the kind of criminal empire until. He had bowel cancer and he was diagnosed terminal and had to come out and run his business for him. Okay. He came out the army to run his security for him. And what age were you then? Uh, 23. Right. So, so you had young. seven years in the army. Yeah. Wow. And young did squaddy. you actually enjoy the discipline? I loved the army. Mm -hmm. I wish I never came out. Okay. Uh, it's something that I, I battle with all the time. Right. Um, but what happened was he had bowel cancer and he said, listen, you need to come out the army and support me because 
you couldn't trust them deals. My sister had her own businesses, so she couldn't do it as much as she could. So I'd come out the army to run a security firm, and I hadn't realised there's people like, I don't want to say their names, but yeah. big gangsters in Glasgow okay. to this day who are still involved in it. So I'd become this kind of young squaddy, enjoying life. I came out and I'm running this 100 man security company, and life just became serious, and it was like mm. getting death threats, sites were getting firebombed, they were smashing sites up, and it was just war. Right. So I'd come from controlled war. To yeah. uncontrolled war. I never know who my enemy was. And what I was going to say, what's that like when mm. it, there's a very clear, there's, there's lines drawn, mm. if you like, in the sand, when you're in the services, you mm. know who your enemy is, you know who your friends and are. And you're doing good. Yeah, and you're doing good. Mm. There's an actual point mm -hmm. to any violence. What is that like then to, like you say, you don't actually want to be doing it, mm -hmm. but you're thrown in. How do you cope with what you, in a sense, have to become? Mm -hmm. Not something you want. I, I never coped with it. Mm. I, I never really dealt with the problem. I, I never got involved in the fights, which I'm very lucky about. Um, my stepdad had dealt with most things, and, and when he had died, and I was left with the company. How, how many years then what, did you run it for? Him? Just like, under a year. Under a year, and then he died. And then mm -hmm. he died, yeah. And then what happened was, when he went away, people knew my dad was obviously the, the alpha male. And people knew that I wasn't, because friends from school were probably saying, guy, he's quiet, he's not that kind of guy. And, mm -hmm. and it was as if the wolves just got let out, mm. and then it was chaos. Okay. My sights were getting attacked, and, and I, I didn't know how to control it. And I was lucky, because I just met my wife, Ashley, who was a Christian. And what happened was, as she says, it was her first and second date, she had her third date, you have to come to church, or we can't date anymore. Right. And she was being cheeky about it, and being funny, and I always, always knew God was in my life, but I never knew. Who Jesus was. So when you say you always knew God was in your life, mm -hmm. what do you mean? Like even in your army like, days? Even if I was ever in trouble, I was like, you're, you're talking a talking Christian, like, mm -hmm. uh, so church, so if I was in trouble, I'd be like, oh God, help me, like, just deal with this problem. And I promise I'll come to church on Sunday, yeah. I was that guy, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh -huh. and, uh, and I, so I, I, I knew God, but I never had a relationship with him. Okay. So I met Ashley on the third day, she's like, come to this church, it's, it's, and I was like, the church is boring, like, mm. I don't like singing hymns, I always fall asleep, and she's like, <laughs> it's not like that, I hadn't never heard of this church, you know what I mean, she says, come to C7, so we go to C7, and, and bear in mind, my life, at this point, apart from Ashley, is surrounded by gangsters and criminals, yep. who are yep. violent, who mm -hmm. are going to hurt me, and then I get to this church, and as soon as I walk in the door, this guy just hugs me, and I'm kind of like, Ugh. Don't do that in because Glasgow. I'm, I'm not used <laughs> yeah. to that affection, and I'm like, all right, mate. <laughs> and then, and it was this big, it's like a big meeting room, a big area, and it's with tea and coffee. And I was like, oh, this is nice church. This is not a church. This is the reception area. And I'm like, oh, reception area. That's fancy. <laughs> it's an old garage. It's massive. And then she's like, let's go into the auditorium, and I could hear music. And I was like, oh, they play Coldplay, because that's what it sounded like, Coldplay right. music. Right. So we goes in this tunnel, and then we came out of this room, and it was just. Hundreds of people, yeah. with their hands up. There's a, a five-piece band. The music's amazing, and I'm like, this is not church. This is uh -huh. this is a gig. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. This is <laughs> this is not church. This is a gig. This is a music gig. She's yeah. playing with me, um. and then and then Jason Cask, the pastor, came up, and he started speaking. and And sometimes I go to church, and people, it, his word feels like it's personal to me. Yeah. And this day yeah. he was talking about letting go of things. Mm -hmm. If something's not good for you, mm -hmm. you need to let it go and put your faith in God. And, I'm, wow. and I made a decision that night because I felt like Ashley told, and I said to her, did you tell him my problems? <laughs> and she's like, I never told him anything. <laughs> it just sermon is yeah, for Gary. God, God, God just hammered me in the heart with his yeah. words. Yeah. And, and after that, I, it just, my life just changed instantly. And it's, it's amazing so how because- did you, How did you let go? of the business, because it's not very well to go into church mm -hmm. and yay, God's changed me, but Monday morning, yeah. you still have, yeah, I've got well, a gangster's that, empire this is what <laughs> So for a few weeks, I was going to church, and then I had this, so I was like Christian Gary on a Sunday, yeah. and then Gangster Gary tried to run this, not Gangster, but tried to run the security company yeah. amongst gangsters, and I went to church, it was like my fourth time at church, this guy, so Jason would say, good morning, worship music, and then he would say, good morning, say hello to the person next to you as most churches do. And then this guy had just walked and I could see him in my white shirt and he caught my attention. And what had happened was he came right up to me and says, I'm Stephen McKenna. This guy had done a deal with my dad, a legitimate deal for property. So this guy was in my past wow. and he's in church. Yeah. And he used to be this big massive businessman. He found okay. God and changed his life. And I just connected with this guy straight away. Mm -hmm. And 
And I was like, oh, I'm Gary. And he said, why do you meet you for coffee? So I met him the next day. And he said, right, what's going on in your life? Because Christian just asked what's in your heart. And I just told him everything that I've told you. Yeah. Everything that's been on my past, everything that's gone just now and how I'm not coping with it, how I don't yeah. enjoy it, how I just want to run away. Mm -hmm. And he says, walk away with it then. And I was like, I can't because I'm getting like four or five grand a week. Yeah. And he's like, do you want it? And I was like, no, really, because yeah. he said, walk away. And the next day I phoned the other director and I said, listen, I'm out of this. And they're like, what is it? And I says, I went to church, I found God, and I just wanted to get the business. <laughs> and they're like, come and meet us, please come meet us. And I went to meet them, and they're like, is everything all right? Because they thought I'd lost my mind. Right. And I'm like, no, right. I just feel in my heart that this isn't for me. It wasn't ever for me. You just have the business. Yeah. Okay. And all the best. And was it as simple as that, in a sense? Uh, they must have found away. it. I never spoke to them after that, because well. they must have found it as a threat. Yeah. Because I was good yeah. at getting clients and getting sites. Because mm -hmm. I, was, I wasn't a bad person. I wasn't a gangster. I was just a kind of happy, choppy lad who would look yeah. after people. Yeah. I would care about people. So uh, the clients liked me yeah. and a lot of work came yeah. through me. And then I just walked away. And, and and so what did you walk away to? Because... Nothing. That's Completely it. Nothing. And when I was 16, I had to join the army at 16. I was in the army and I'd never learned how to pay a bill. And then I just left my security. The, 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 the biggest... I mean, my life was amazing. I'm not going to lie and say, oh, my life's dead bad. Yes, it was bad during the day, but at night time I was like four or five grand, all mm. the best mates, had great cars, had great mm -hmm. holidays, but I was empty. Yeah. As soon as I woke up, I was empty. And then meeting Ashley, I don't know what it was about her. It just, uh, as if she just installed courage into me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm getting out of the business and, and I started again. And, and could you see something in Ashley? That, I mean, oh, faith was amazing. Yeah, yeah, so so mm -hmm. did that inspire you? Did yeah. you want some of that I wanted almost? Because you were seen, empty. When I, when I seen her, like, when we first started dating, we had an argument. She'd be like, I'm just giving it to God. And, and that would be it. And she'd deal with the argument. And I'd be still carrying on 10 days later. <laughs> I'd be like, how can you just get to God? Come back to me and tell me how, wait, you can, wait, how can I wait, do wait. that? And she's just like, give it to God. To this day, she still does it. And it's just amazing. Yeah. And, and I seen something in her that I wanted and she mm -hmm. was just feeding me with faith. Yeah. Help me get my faith, show me yeah. Jesus, get my Bible and and Stevie had said, listen, I said I I, um, I need money because I've got a wife. We just got married at this point. I've got a wife and stuff and, and he's like, oh, one of the guys in church has got a job for you. And I was like, how did you know? He went, oh, we just sorted it out for you. So then I became a salesman for this guy Craig McGowan, who to this day is my best mate. And so the church got me away from my past. Yeah. And they gave me a great job. Mm, great wow. job. And then one of the guys in church, Michael Ojo, gave me a car for free. See? And I was just Could like, you give Michael my address? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, this is the people I want in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody apart from my mum in the past, they try to hurt me. Yeah. These people just facilitate my, my great life. Mm. Yeah. And, and what, from what you now know of God, mm -hmm. can you see that? It's not just that they were amazing people, mm -hmm. which they sound like they are, but it is that being a Christian. Mm -hmm. And is that something that you aspire now to be? Yeah, I, I want to be that guy who, who like, I believe, because obviously I'm a comedian. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. I, I believe that that's my calling, mm -hmm. is public speaking and, mm -hmm. and maybe it's doing comedy, maybe it's one day when I, when I mature, being a pastor. Um, I don't know, but... It's as if these people are facilitating my calling. Yeah. Because everything that they ever did led to me doing comedy. Mm -hmm. Everything they facilitated gave me a car to go to gigs. It's just as... And I love that because before I always felt alone. Right. So, Even though you were surrounded yeah, by... People, because I'm sure there would be loads of hangers on. Well, that's it, yeah. Four or five grand money, a week. Uh, and there's a bit of kudos. And the plastic you, mates. Yeah, I had yeah. that. Mm -hmm. and, and I always felt... Even when I was with them, I felt alone. And, and since I've had faith, like today, I drove to Oban, as we were laughing about earlier, yeah. delivering milk. <laughs> Just run. I got to a, a rest stop. So I left at six in the morning, it was, the, the daylight was coming, it was starting to get nice, the mountains and the, mm. and the locks. So I stopped and I jumped out, and I was sitting having my sandwich, because my lunch, I eat my lunch in the morning, uh -huh. and then I buy more lunch, that's kind of guy. It's called breakfast, Gary. I don't have breakfast, I have, I have a lunch, and then a lunch lunch. Lunch. And, yeah. I, and I stopped and I was just like, I got out the, the truck and I was sitting in a rock just looking at the door, just next to the lock, there was nothing near me mm -hmm. and I didn't feel alone. Yeah. I'm just praying and, and that that's, that sums up life before God and life after God. Mm -hmm. You're walking with God now, you've got the Holy yeah. Ghost, you've got Jesus there. Yeah. It's just you're never alone anymore. So, regardless of what I go through in my life, I'm never alone. Yeah. Unconditional love, I swear I sell it all for this. Trying to keep it together.
together, forget my awkwardness But I'm um, off the this, just you and me off in this Valley of shadows and I know they tryna pick me off in this But all I need is you